A top U.S. general has released new details about China's possible hypersonic missile test in the summer. Here's what you need to know. The Chinese hypersonic missile test went around the world this summer, according to the second most senior U.S. general, John Hayden. Speaking to CBS News, the general said the missile dropped off a hypersonic glide vehicle that glided all the way back to China, adding weight to the story broken by the Financial Times last month, which described the glide vehicle's ability to travel at five times the speed of sound, the minimum figure to be considered hypersonic. The vehicle missed its target by around 40 kilometers, but General Hayden called this close enough to prompt U.S. concern about China's new technological capability. Behind this concern, USA Today reports that while ballistic missiles reach altitudes of 1,300 to 2,000 kilometers before descending and can be detected by radar systems, hypersonic glide vehicles keep a lower trajectory and can maneuver within the atmosphere, making them difficult to detect and destroy. Both types of missiles are capable of carrying nuclear warheads, but the Financial Times adds that China's new missile, which is classified as a fractional orbital bombardment system, can also fly over the South Pole, while most U.S. missile defense defense systems are aimed at attacks over the North Pole. These details were likely close to hand when another U.S. general, Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, described the testing of the nuclear-capable weapon as close to a Sputnik moment last month, referring to the Soviet Union's 1957 launch of the first Earth-orbiting artificial satellite, which caught the U.S. unprepared and sparked efforts to catch up. This point is highly debatable, however, with the Washington Post pointing out that, starting in 1959, the United States and the Soviet Union have deployed intercontinental ballistic missiles that travel more than 20 times the speed of sound, before noting that the missile defense system this hypersonic missile will apparently nullify has failed three of its last six tests, according to journalist and author Fred Kaplan, and could already be rendered useless with small asymmetrical measures such as simply firing two missiles at the same time. In this context, the notion of this new missile system as a technological paradigm shift appears to be a bit of a stretch, and the more you look at it, the more that point emerges. It has actually been long known that China has been attempting to develop this kind of technology, for instance, with the South China Morning Post reporting in late 2018 that China had tested out a new hypersonic aircraft, the Starry Sky 2, which could one day be used to carry nuclear missiles. Furthermore, General Hayden has actually been speaking out publicly against the threat of hypersonic weapons for a number of years, saying in 2018 that the U.S. had no defense against hypersonic weapons being developed by the Chinese and Russians. What may be most notable about the recent test then is that it is a symbolic extension of the continually rising tension between the U.S. and China, with its particular focus around the issue of Taiwan. But that dramatic framing by U.S. generals remains important, according to the Washington Post, which says the real story here is the active encouragement of a pure competitor by generals such as Haydn and Milley, because it could lead to a new Cold War that could get hot and even go nuclear. The task of U.S. foreign policy is to recognize that traditional power politics can indeed deter Chinese expansionism, while also recognizing the ways in which interdependence might also constrain it, the Post explains, before adding the United States should make an effort to deploy both tools, an approach that will certainly prove far more complicated to implement than scaremongering and chest-thumping, but is precisely the one that is likely to keep the world at peace and prosperity. For its part, China has denied the reports of a hypersonic test altogether, according to the BBC, saying that the test was instead the test of a reusable spacecraft, though Aaron Stein, director of research at the Foreign Policy Institute in Philadelphia, explained the difference could really be a matter of semantics. A reusable space plane is a hypersonic glider. It just lands, he said. Adding, a fractional orbital bombardment system delivered via some sort of glider would do much of the same thing as a reusable space plane, so I think the actual differences between the two stories is marginal. China is trying out a new toy and is making some countries uncomfortable. Here's what we know about China's hypersonic naval gun. CNBC reports that China's newest railgun uses electromagnetic energy to fire rounds and is capable of hitting targets 200 kilometers away, traveling at 2.5 kilometers per second. That's seven times the speed of sound. According to CNBC, a missile traveling at that speed would take just 90 seconds to travel from Washington to Philadelphia. Xinhua News reported that China may be mounting the railgun on a Type 055 destroyer. The Type 055 is Asia's largest destroyer to date, measuring 180 meters long and 20 meters wide. It's equipped with anti-missile, anti-ship and anti-submarine weapons. It's equipped to power kinetic energy weapons.
CNBC reports that information from a U.S. intelligence report reveals that China is expected to introduce its new weapon into its arsenal in 2025. The scale and speed of construction at possible missile silo fields in China suggests its government is putting significant resources into developing its nuclear capabilities, with a new Federation of American Scientists report increasing an estimate of the total number of new silos being built from the 229 described in a previous report to 300. The new report is careful to state that it is not certain what is in the silos, but says there is increased confidence that they are related to the People's Liberation Army Rocket Forces modernization program and and, based on commercially available satellite images, it describes significant progress on construction since the earlier report in July. It also describes how China appears to be experimenting with different types of shelters at the three silo field sites near Yumen, Hami, and Ordos in north-central China. Before concluding that although China is currently still far behind the U.S. and Russia's total nuclear arsenal, the new silos could see China's total intercontinental ballistic missile force exceed that of either Russia and the United States in the foreseeable future. The Russians have test-launched a new hypersonic missile that's been described by President Vladimir Putin as an ideal weapon. Russia's Kinzhal missile was launched from a MiG-31 interceptor jet that took off from an airfield in the southern military district. Video footage released by the country's defense ministry shows the missile detaching from the jet in mid-air. The Kinzhal hypersonic missile travels at 10 times the speed of sound, with a range of over 2,000 kilometers. The launch was reportedly successful, with the missile hitting the preset target. The Kinzhal is part of a new line of weapons unveiled during Putin's recent State of the Nation address that can reportedly outmaneuver U.S. defenses. A Russian anti-satellite missile test blew up one of its own satellites on Monday, November 15th, according to the BBC, resulting in 1,500 pieces of trackable orbital debris and causing astronauts on the International Space Station to shelter in capsules for safety. Political reports that Russia did not warn the U.S. about the test in advance, and subsequently, the seven-member crew of the ISS, which included three Russian cosmonauts, was instructed to shelter inside the Soyuz and Dragon crew capsules for two hours, according to NASA. The space station is now passing through or near the debris cloud from Cosmos 1408 every 90 minutes, though there is no need to shelter beyond the second and third passes. More broadly, the BBC says space debris is a rapidly worsening situation, with roughly a million to one to ten centimeter objects floating in uncontrolled orbit of Earth, and Time magazine pointing out that much of it is moving at over 17,000 miles per hour. Part of the explanation for this is that Russia is not the first country to shoot down a satellite in this way, with India, China, and the U.S. also having done so previously. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.